Hello and welcome to another video. Uh, this one I'm going to be giving you a little bit of an intro into profiling, uh, <clears throat> performance profiling in Python and show you how I usually go about doing profiling. So let's jump into that one. And today we're going to be looking at pre-commit, which is a tool that I created. And there's a particular part of it that's a little bit slow right now, and I'm actually working on improving it. Uh, last stream, I was you know, playing with this little little thing and uh, showing that it was slow and then working on improving it. So let me show you what's slow first. Uh, if we run pre-commit run, this is just a default run of pre-commit, but there are no files staged, so it skips absolutely everything. And if you're very perceptive, you'll notice that there's a slight pause before it, it starts the beginning. And that's actually a problem <laughs> uh, that I think I should improve. And we can look at kind of uh, the minimum time that it could ever take and the time that it's taking right now by doing something like this time python c import precommit.main. Uh, and this will import all of the modules in precommit. So this is kind of like the, the bare minimum that, could it ever, that it could ever take. And, you know, run it a few times to get yourself a good sample. So. We're looking at like a bare minimum of 120 milliseconds. And there's not really much that can be done here. That's just kind of like um, Python's problems there. Actually, I wrote a tool which can show us uh, the, you know, the actual import time that's happening here. So if we pip install import time waterfall, and I don't remember how this tool works. <laughs> uh, you just call it, I guess, import time, import time waterfall main. Uh, yeah, so you can kind of see like how many milliseconds each model is taking. This view is not so great though, so there's another view uh, which is dash dash har. And I <laughs> let me uh, open up a browser window because there's there's directions on making this uh, work a little bit better. Import time waterfall. This is not what I intended to show in this video, but. It reminded me of that, so we're gonna we're gonna do this. Yeah, so uh, you can copy it to your clipboard using this command here. Uh, that's specific to Linux, though, so you probably won't have that if you're on Windows or on Mac OS. And precommit.main. Oh, I don't even have Xclip installed. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> uh, well, you can just output it to standard out and copy and paste it. Manually, assuming that <laughs> uh, I should have installed Xclip. I'll have to update my configuration management, which we'll be covering in a future video. Uh, but if we copy this and we go to a har viewer, we can kind of see, uh, and har is a format for HTTP timing. Uh, let me put this over here so you guys can see that. And I'm kind of abusing the HTTP format to simulate, you know, module imports. Uh, so if you you like load a page in Firefox or whatever, uh, or Chrome, where's inspect elements? And if you look at the like uh, network tab, for instance, let's reload this. You can see like you get kind of a, a waterfall here. So this is exactly the same format that I'm abusing here. But anyway, you can kind of see which uh, which models take the longest time. So you can see like the import of uh, urlib. Wait, what is the top level import? Yeah, the import of import lib metadata causes all of these models to be imported. Uh, and then what triggers email.parser? That's weird. Anyway, <laughs> we spend a bunch of time in email.parser. Uh, we spend some time in precommit.color. Uh, most of that is importing YAML. <laughs> but anyway, you can kind of get an idea of like which modules are spending time at import time. But that's not what I wanted to cover today. I wanted to cover the stuff after the import time, uh, which will kind of show us what's slow. And to do that, we're going to be using a tool called cProfile, which is built into Python. And you can use it by just doing python-m cProfile. And it has some options. We're going to be using the dash o option, which is going to output the stats to a file. So do python dash m c profile dash o. It doesn't matter what you call this. I usually call it dot p stats since it's a binary p stats format. 
Um, and then we want to grab the binary that we're running. So in this case, we're just doing which pre-commit, which will give us the pre-commit binary, and then run. Uh, there's actually a new dash m mode. Actually, let's just use the new dash m mode. Haven't used that before. Um, so we're going to run precommit.main with the run command. So this will run similar to what we saw before. Uh, but this time it'll output a pstats file. And this pstats file is not super useful on its own. Uh, it's just a, you know, binary file that has some particular metadata in it. Um, you can use, if I remember correctly, you can use the pstats module. Yeah. Um, and there's it's like an interactive thing and you can kind of look at, uh, uh, let's see, sort, sort, I don't know, uh, cumulative time. And then stats 10. Yeah, so you can see like which things are taking the most cumulative time, I guess. Uh, I find that this is really hard to use and not super useful, so we're going to use a different tool to visualize this profiling data. Um, and first we're going to install it, so we'll do pip install yelp gprof to dot. This is actually a fork of gprof to dot, but uh, when I worked at Yelp I improved it a little bit and some of the other uh, engineers on the performance team also did some improvements to this. but. Um, yeah, I find that it works better than the vanilla one, especially if you're using Firefox, which we will be using Firefox. And gprof to dot uh, has some options here. We're probably going to be skipping most of these, but we'll come back to this option later. Uh, but this allows you to like prune the graph or like change which functions get displayed because sometimes it's you know super noisy or whatever. Um, but gprof to dot knows how to take in that pstats file. And it will output, um, not nano, we're gonna use badly. It will output what's called a uh, dot file. And dot is uh, part of the graphviz tool set. And it basically allows you to have a declarative graph format. So in this case, uh, we're building a digraph and it has a bunch of nodes in it. And some of the nodes connect to other nodes. And then there's style information and text after it. Um, you can kind of ignore the text, and if we uh, if we get rid of the style information, what do you mean invalid regex? Oh, <laughs> yeah. So if you get rid of the style information, you can see that it's really just a bunch of like declaring edges and nodes in a graph. But anyway, we're gonna take that output instead of looking at it in an editor. We're going to pipe it to dot, uh, and dot is the actual tool that turns this into a graph. We're going to turn it into an SVG because <laughs> that's the format that I always use for this. You can also do PNG. There's probably a PDF output. I don't know. Uh, but we're going to convert it into an SVG. And then if we open this in Firefox, we can actually visualize the profile that we just got. <clears throat> And you'll kind of see everything is kind of colored based on how much time it takes. So red is kind of like everything below this is the the slowest parts and the blue parts are like, you know, inconsequential overall. Although this is 8% of the time, so it's, it's not exactly inconsequential. Um, but I find that this, you know, by default is kind of hard to see because you're still uh, you're still profiling imports here. And so what I usually do is I try and find the main function. So in this case, it's uh, main 181 colon main. And we'll use this to prune this graph a little bit, just to make it a little bit easier to see. And this is an option to gprof to dot. So we're going to do dash z main 181 main. And that'll, that'll make this the root of the graph instead of uh, exec. And so you can see, like, now we get a, a little bit smaller of a graph here. And unsurprisingly, the thing that I had guessed that it was is uh, this healthy function. Where is the yeah, healthy function, which um, is taking anywhere from like 60 to 70 percent of a no op run. And this is easy to fix. I just haven't done it yet. But anyway, this is kind of like how I go about profiling stuff. Uh, hopefully you found this useful and I'll link all the tools in the description so you can 
uh, check those out yourself. Uh, but yeah, if you guys have any other questions, feel free to leave a comment or hit me up on Twitter or join my Twitch stream. And thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.